Oh, that was weak, man. Y'all was hollering loud in that, that cornhole today. Come on, man. Good evening. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, it's, it's just great to be uh, to be back with y'all this year at camp, and uh, I just uh, am overjoyed to be here, and it's just a blessing when Pastor Burson gets a hold of me and invited me again back uh, this year. We have been soul winning on some soul winning marathons. I think one since uh, we were here, or, yeah, one since... Uh, we were here last year and during camp, I only took a couple of days off and uh, I enjoyed it so much last year that I told my wife, I said, I, well, I believe I'm just going to go ahead and take the whole week. And I did and uh, I, I bid it into uh, to coming on down and, and uh, i tell you what, it was one of the best things I think I ever did. I've never saw a church with, with as much uh, uh, hospitality as, as a stronghold Baptist church and all y'all others y'all may have pitched into I don't know what went on there but but anyway uh, I feel very blessed and, uh, and how y'all taking care of me and man I get to that cabin in there and boy I, I live 25 minutes from here and I've never been inside I, I think I've been inside one of them cabins maybe one time uh, I do heat and air conditioning and uh, and I had to come down on a service call one time and I said man these things are nice here and I want to come down here one day and stay and I never have until this week and I uh, we really have enjoyed it uh, except last night I I woke up and, and, and you know how they are. You know, we slept in the back part of the cabin and in the front part you got some more beds up there. Two other beds. And, 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 the, and the toilet just keeps flushing. I mean, I, it'll flush and I, got, and I said, well, I don't know what that was. I'm just going to lay here. Well, it did it again. I get up and I, go, I said, man, I'm going to go look. So I grabbed, that, I grabbed that piece, you know, I had. You know, I went in there. I said, I don't know who in the world might be in there. Who would want to come here and use my John tonight? I, you know, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, he had a bad day if he decided to, you know. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, I went in there and was nothing there. But uh, that's the only thing that's, uh, that's, that's kind of upset me is that, is that toilet. I mean, it just does it ever so often. And I'm a light sleeper to begin with. And, uh, and but anyway, we'll get through that. If that's the worst thing, hey, that's all right, ain't it? Amen. Uh, I could have been worse. I could have had a young and to fall and break their arm yesterday and have to go to uh, go be rushed out to uh, the hospital in Atlanta and have an arm looked at. So, uh, but anyway, but I'm blessed. But like I say, it's, it's just it's just wonderful. I, I'm glad I went ahead and did that this year and just took that time. Although I am just a short ways away, uh, I can go home, you know, within 25 minutes or so. Uh, and uh, but I have, I mean, it's just it's an awesome. All y'all been awesome. Y'all, y'all have got a great church, Stronghold Baptist Church. Uh, uh, every, it's from the first time that I came to Stronghold to. Uh to, uh, to the Soul Winning Marathon when we was first learning Soul Winning. Uh, the hospitality that was there and the unity that's there. I'm telling you what, I've been in churches without unity. Anybody ever been in a church without any unity in it? That ain't no fun, okay? I, I've been there. That's, that's no fun. Uh, that's why I enjoy unity uh, uh, so good, I guess. Uh, but I really do appreciate that and my family appreciates that. And uh, I really, I, I'm really enjoying myself. Enjoyed the preaching last night. Looking forward to Pastor Jimenez tomorrow night. Brother Jonathan uh, Shelley on Thursday and, and Pastor Anderson on Friday. So uh, enjoy, I'm looking forward to that. But tonight, we already don't have to tell you to turn nowhere because somebody's already read. Uh, but I may reread some of that because that's just how I am. Uh, so uh, also, one little, other little point is I want to throw in there. Uh, it might get you laughing a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm probably the oldest pastor that's probably, that's probably even preaching this week. I'm 51 years old and, and I know how old I am because why? Because today when they done rock, paper, scissors down there at the thing, I didn't even know how to do it, bless God. Uh, y'all too, y'all, y'all, y'all gotta get some older folk. All right, well, we can flip a coin or something. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so uh, but anyway, but let's go ahead to tonight and let's get started into what God's got for us here tonight. But I, I really want to begin in verse eight there uh, in in chapter number seventeen, and and I've uh, I kind of come up with a little title here to uh, kind of title the message tonight is uh, there is a battle raging. Uh, there is a battle raging, uh, br brother. Uh, Brother Day, uh, Pastor Burzens last night uh, preached out of the book of Philippians there, and he was talking about boldness, preached about boldness, having having boldness, you know, to preach the gospel, boldness to go out soul winning. I believe I believe when a person does not knock a soul, does not go soul winning, I believe it comes down to to to, to, to boldness. Uh, fear overtakes people when they knock somebody's door. They're not they're afraid they're not going to be able to say what they need to say. They're going to get whatever. But man, you got you got the word of God, and we just got to trust the word of God and knock that door. Amen. Uh, so uh, but anyway, but uh, it kind of goes along with uh, what he uh, preached last night. Kind of, I was even thinking about it as I was sitting there last night. Uh, but tonight, if I had to ask you a question before we got started tonight, I would ask you, uh, who is the Amalek in your life tonight? 
Who is the Amalek in your life? And we're going to talk about that here in a minute because he's talked about, it's talked about here in the Word of God. Uh, and whether you believe it tonight, you have an Amalek that you fight each and every day. Uh, every, every, everybody here, you walking in flesh, okay? <laughs> we, all have a, we all have a flesh and we all have a, a war each and every day that we wake up and, and, and get up and go do what we're going to do during the day. We've got, we got an Amalek that's there that's ready to fight us. Uh, hey, uh, there's, there's many things that fight a born again believer. Anybody that wants to do anything for the Lord. Amen? Amen. But uh, tonight I just got uh, several points I want to bring. The first one is Amalek is out there. And I want you to look down there at page 8 and it says, then Amalek then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Okay, so here comes Amalek. He's going. To, this, this group of people, this army here, is coming to fight the children of Israel here. Now, the enemy here is what? The enemy is real. The enemy is real. Anybody that, just like Pastor Burson said last night, when you begin to share the gospel, when you hear somebody talking about the, the you know, this, this, this gay agenda, this, uh, this fighting against the church today, this fighting against America that's uh, come up against America and, and, and trying to push their, their, their way off on everybody and, and has, how he was talking about we need to be bold and, and when we hear somebody say that we need to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, the word of God says something totally different there. That's, that's not right. That's totally against God, okay? You know, we, we got to have a boldness about that. So you could count that or you could say that is an Amalek that is against the church today. Alright, it is. But he's as, brother, as Pastor Burton and said last night, the more of us that, that, are, that are doctrinally sound and know what the Word of God says about it, hey, the more of us that are out there that are able to stand and fight, hey, the better we have a chance to win. Amen. You understand that? The, 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 the better we have, hey, the more that adultery and fornication and, and all those other sins in the Word of God that God talks about, the more that it's preached against in our churches today, the better we're going to have at, at, at fighting it and standing against it and not taking in place in your life. You say, well, I'm a child of God. It can't happen. Yes, it can. It happens every day. Okay, it happens every day. But you know what? When, if, you, if you're in a church that, that preaches against that and stands against that and shows you and, and teaches you what that will do to you as a, as a child of God, hey, you're more likely to stay away from that, okay? You're more likely to, 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 to understand and you've got to understand what the Word of God says. But tonight, we're not even talking about that, but that's all right. It says the enemy is our, it, it, the enemy is out there. The enemy is ready whether we're ready or not. Okay, the enemy is ready. We come down here. We all in unity here. Everybody's everybody's a believer. Well, uh, you know, uh, most of people except some of the younger children, the people that had you know have said, may not have gotten saved. But I'm telling you, but most of all, all, everybody here is born again. It's easy to come here and fellowship with you folk. It's easy to come in here and love on one another, and everybody's in you. Everybody, you know. But look at here, man. When you got to go back out there into the world, you got to go back into a workforce, man. The enemy is there waiting on us. They're out there waiting on you. Okay, they're out there waiting. And you, uh, Brother Peter said he, he just needed some time to get away and just kind of relax. I'm the same way. To get out of just the daily thing, the daily grind and come down here and relax and be around some good folk that believe, hey, that believe the way you believe, like-minded folks. Hey, man, that's great. You know, but there's going to come a time we got to go back out, yonder. We got to go back into to, to real life, okay? Real, real life circumstances and problems and, and issues there. Not saying there's not any problems. I mean, we, we have, we, you're going to have problems. Problems, but you know what I'm saying, all right? And the enemy out there, the the the, the one that is it is is at the at the helm of this thing is nothing but that old dirty mouth Satan. Okay, the devil. Hey, you don't believe the devil is real? You're crazy. All right. Hey, the devil's real because why? We're having to fight the things that's coming against our nation. Uh, abortion and, and homosexuality, the sodomites or whatever. All that is nothing but the, the, the Satan. Okay, because he wants to do what? He wants to get more people uh, on his side or, or going to hell. That, you know, he, he's, he's against God. He's against the, the word of God. Okay, which they've already, you know, anybody that's in that, in that shape, they're already, they already gone anyway, they already reprobate, they're, they can't be saved. But I'm talking about people that we're trying to reach. Okay, the people we're trying to reach with the gospel. Men and leaders, okay, leaders in the church, men in their homes and, and, and leaders of your family, each one of us today are in a battle. We're battling an Amalek. 
Every one of us, okay? Every one of us. Every one of us have, have minds that's, uh, that's, that's that, you know, eyes and, and likes to go places in times that, that we really don't want them to go. Amen? If you're a man, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, but it's nice to go down here to the lake. And you know, today it was nice for me to be able to go down there and not have to look at that. Okay, the ladies are covered up. They're, they're not all everything hanging out everywhere. Amen. Amen. Huh? Come on. That's the truth, man. It's good to be here, but man, I tell you, uh, that's that's what that's what gets uh, you know distracts us. Men's eyes. We're moved with our eyes, and women are with what emotions. Right? Okay? When well, uh, things catch our eye. So we must be careful as men, as leaders in our church, as pastors, okay? We must be careful because Amalek is there. He is there and he's waiting, okay? It's a battle there. And we must what? We got to stay what? Charged up. We got to stay in our word of God. We got, we got to stay in church, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. All these men that go out on all these trips and their mama, the wives are dragging their, dragging their children to church. I've seen it before, maybe not in this church. And, and, and I hope not. not that's not that, not that way in my church because I preach against it so much they get mad and say, well, I, just gonna need, I guess I need to go ahead and do what he's saying. Huh? Okay, I'm not saying it's not right, right for a man to go off and do things and man to have a time. But I'm, I'm telling you, men, you must stay. We got to stay where we need to be with the Lord. We got to stay and not forsake the sum of ourselves together. Get that family in that church and get that family in the Word of God because Amalek is waiting. Okay, he's waiting out there. Now let's just move on. I'm taking too much of your time, Anna. First Peter chapter five. Look at First Peter five. First Peter. That's right before Second Peter. First Peter Chapter number 5 You look at verse uh, Y'all know where I'm going First Peter 5 and 8 Look at what the Bible says The Bible says be sober Be vigilant Because your adversary the devil As a roaring lion walketh about Seeking whom he may devour Huh? So you tell me the devil ain't real. Yes, he is. Because why? He is seeking whom he may devour, and he does not care who it is. He don't, hey, he, he, he is not prejudiced to any believer. We're all susceptible to that, okay? But, but we must, the first part of that verse says what? It says we must what? Be sober. That means to be alert and be on guard all, at all times. Be on guard at all times. It's what that word uh, is, is meant. It's be vigilant. Be about it. Be, be vigilant or, you know, just watch, okay? Because the adversary is roaring like a lion and walking about. All right, let's, go, let's just move on. Now, it's, it's, it's the onslaught of the enemy. The coronavirus that we went through and they still want to wear their mask or whatever. I mean, I've seen them uh, out here all over. I've seen them got a woman in the car yesterday with a mask on by herself going down the road. I'm like, you're crazy. I mean, what is wrong with you? Huh? What in the world is wrong with you? Okay? But, but, but you know, that wasn't nothing, and that's nothing but an onslaught of the enemy. They try to push the church down. Try to push the church down. Try to get people not to go to church. Okay? I understand. I got, hey, I got it. I lost my taste for a little while and, and, got, and got a little sick there. Okay? And I know it affected people differently. But I'm telling you what, it wasn't nothing but an onslaught of the enemy on, the, on our nation. All right, Satan is not just some Tinkerbell that we're, that we're talking about tonight. He is real and he is mean and he wants our life. He wants your life. All right, let's move on to uh, some more scripture here. The Bible says there, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek. I just wonder how many men here are willing, if Moses, if you was there that day, and he told him to choose out to them men, and he chose your name, he called your name, would you be willing to go out and fight? Are you willing to go out and fight? Are you willing to stand? For the word of God. Hey, there's no churches out there to stand. You know, somebody asked me last night about, well, my Lord, how did you and Pastor Burgess get in contact? Uh, how did y'all get in contact? Were you way down here and him over there in Atlanta? And, and I started the conversation. I said, my son-in-law went to a, uh, a, a preaching, uh, some kind of something. Pastor Burgess had his stronghold and Pastor Anderson was there. And Pastor Burgess said, oh Lord, I, boy, all of them come through, Pastor Anderson. You know, that's what he said. And, and, and you, know, it, I, you know how I got in contact with him? You know why I had to go that far because ain't nobody else so winning nobody but the Jehovah Witness I ain't going with him <laughs> amen <laughs> Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, there's nobody to sow when nobody knocks any doors anymore. You know, when the first thing you do when you knock a door, what does it say? I'm not, I, I'm not interested in a Jehovah Witness. I said, I ain't no Jehovah Witness. Well, that's who it usually is. Okay. 
And I went to one door not long ago. One of the men over, some of the men were with me. I said, hey, I'm not Jehovah's Witness. And she says, I am, and slammed the door. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Save me a lot of time. <laughs> Save me a lot of time, okay? All right now. And the Bible says here that and Moses, and he chose, he said, go choose those men out and go out and fight with Amalek tomorrow. He said, I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Look here, you can go out and fight with the rod of God in your hand. Amen. We have the rod of God, right? We got the word of God here. Amen. The word of God is, 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 is where the power is at. Amen. The word of God is where power is. That's where we draw our power from, okay? You can draw your power from any, many other things, and I promise you it will leave you flat. But man, you draw your power from the word of God, hey, you, you're going to win, okay? Amen. With the word of God, and that's where the power is. Because he told him to go to the top of the mountain with the rod of God there, all right? And then it says here that, uh, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Now think about that. When he raised up his hand, Israel prevailed. Now your pastor is standing tonight in, 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 a, in, a, in a spiritual thing, in a spiritual realm of things. Your pastor is standing with his hands up. Hey, there's so many churches out there today that just let him stand there and his hands fall and he's down on his knees. He can't even half make it because why? Because nobody has got his back. Nobody is standing with him. But look here, when Moses is up here, he's standing on, on, up on this mountain with the rod of God in his hand. And it said when he held his hand up, hey, a pastor's hands get tired. Huh? I used to, when I was in the military, I went through an uh, army basic training. And uh, some, some clown did something there and got us all in trouble. And, and they made us all go back there and put rocks in our hands and stand in the back of the room with our hands up like this right here. You know how long that lasted? Not very long. I was putting push-ups before I knew it. All right. So look here. When you think about that, and you think about those rocks and that man. Hus wife, look at your husband tonight. And think about what that man of God has, up has upon him every day as he's leading his own family. And he's, he's, he's teaching your family. He's teaching the Word of God. And, and he's, he's taking you to church week in and week out. He's working a 40-hour, 50-hour, 60-hour week. you got to hold his hands up. He gets tired. He gets tired. A lot of us men, when we, when we, want, we like accolades. We like to have a little pat on the back when we come home from work. You know, hey, honey. You know, we like all that. But we don't always get it, do we? And I'm not saying a woman's supposed to do it. You're not going to be able to do it every day because you got things that's going on yourself. But look here, man. we got to hold the men of God's hands up. you got to hold your passion. No matter what he's preaching on. If you're mad, get over it and just keep holding his hand up. Okay? Because what he's telling you is the word of God. If he's leading you right doctrine, teaching you and preaching you right doctrine, you have no right to say a word. But to hold that man's hands up. Hold that man's hands up and get in there behind him. Okay? Because I guarantee he's going to be there for you when you need something. I'm telling you that right now. I can already tell he's there for this church because of what he's even done for me. And he, you know, we don't, I mean, I know Pastor Burgess, but, you know, we talk with soul winning and things like this. But, man, he treat me like he treat me. Wow. I'm going to join up with y'all. <laughs> huh? Let's move on. And then the Bible says here that, uh, and it came to pass when Moses, well, I mean, it's going to 12. I'll read it four times if y'all let me. But Joseph's hands were heavy. But, but, but Moses' hands were heavy. As I said a while ago, his hands begin to get heavy. You know, our hands get, our, our pastor begins to get, he gets tired. He gets tired. He gets worn. You don't know the phone calls that he gets. You don't know that the things that, he, that, he, that, that, that a pastor hears and knows and gets put into him that you don't ever know one stinking thing about. You never know. Because why? He's got a good way of hiding it. We all do. Okay, but that man, but look here, you got to hold his hands up. You got to pray for him. You got to pray for that pastor. You got to pray for him every day. Okay, and it says that and he took him a stone, took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on. And look what happens right here. I love this. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands. Aaron and her begin to pick him up and, and hold his hands up. Man, that right there tells me that, man, they were behind him. And, man, they know that there was a battle that was going on down there in the valley. And they know that they needed help. And they know that as long as the, uh, Moses' hands stayed up, they know that they were winning. Hey, as long as you keep your pastor's hands up, as long as you keep your husband's hands up, hey, you're going to win. You're going to win, no matter what comes against you. You got to do it. We got to. We got to make sure we're doing that. And the Bible says that, and he, uh, he held his hands one on one side and one, 
the one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. You can imagine how long they stood there. What does that mean? That tells me if it was to the going down to the sun, uh, to the sun went down, it means you must hold his hands up a good bit. That tells me you got to hold them up a while. You just can't do it just a little while. You know, I've had, I've had people to come in, boy, pastor, I love you, and hugging your neck, and, you know, and doing all these things, and, and, they, and, and, they, and they rub rubbing back here, and I'm wondering what they do, and they're just clearing out a place for a knife. <laughs> Uh, and when the going gets tough or you preach something that they don't want to hear, they gone, buddy. Which I'd rather them go anyway than argue about it because I don't, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for no drama. I, I, I've spent enough time around drama in churches. I ain't got time for it. There's too many souls to win, brother. There's too many out there that are going to die and go to hell. There's too many that are going to die and go to hell. With, with us worrying about silly stuff. Okay. Hey, the, the, the Bible is the authority, not me. The Bible is the authority. So if, 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 they, if they got a problem with that, they, got, they don't have the problem with the pastor anymore. They got a problem with God. All right. They got a problem with God. Am I going too long? All right, listen. Here we go. Let's move on. The Bible says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek. Huh? And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. He, they won this battle. He, he said that he discomfited him, then this people with the edge of the sword. So that is very encouraging unto me tonight to know that the battle that I am facing, if I've got some people that are around me and they're holding my hands up, and I've got some people that's got my back, and, we, and, we, and, I, I, and we're all on the same page with the Word of God, and, and we got the Word of God, and we got that power, there's no way we can lose. There's no way we can lose. Like, like he said last night, I keep going back to that. That stuck in me. It's what he's talking about. You get the more people that you get on your side that believe the way you believe, the doctrine that you believe, and, and, and understand the, uh, what it says, the bigger, more people you get. What happened? What happened with Pharaoh? I mean, what happened with, as, as, as more, or with people when more people can begin to get persecuted, <laughs> the larger they get? Huh? The larger they get. You know what I'm saying? When, when, when something, when something happens, uh, it always what? It always calls people to go. When people scatter, what are they doing? I mean, there's more, more people out there that's telling the word, talk, t talking about the Word of God and preaching the gospel. The Tower of Babel, they were all speaking all one language. They had their own little clique there, right? Hey, but when God confused the languages, they all went spread abroad and the gospel gets spread. You know what I'm saying? We don't need no cliques. We need to be spreading the gospel, okay, and, and, and bringing more in, okay? Bringing more, getting more people saved, okay? You know, I've, I've been in churches with, with, with cliques in them and things like that. This stuff makes me sick. Man, we're all one body. One, we're, we're all one group of people. We're unified. We're all together. We're, 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 we're together. All is one. One faith, one baptism, okay? That's where we're at. Now, I done, I done went through all them points. Let me get over to the last page. Okay. Where is the last page? Stuck together. And this is what we do at the end. When we win, we give the one that deserves the glory, and that's God. That's God. You're giving God the glory. We give God the glory for the victory. Look at 13 and 14, and I'm going to close. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his, pe and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. Praise the Lord. Write this for a memorial. This thing that happened, this, this great thing that happened today. We defeated, the, uh, defeated Amalek there in the valley. And let's write that down to where Ed Williams can read it one day. And he can be encouraged. Praise God for the men that penned the, book, the, the, the Bible, penned the King James 16 and 11 Bible down. Praise the Lord. They didn't try to change it all they want to. Okay? One woman stood up one night when a pastor was preaching revival and said, well, my Bible don't say that. And the preacher said, well, my, most, magazines, most magazines don't say what I, my Bible says. Uh, uh, I ain't preaching out of no magazine tonight. I'm preaching out of God's Word, Amen. the only word, 
The only one. They don't need to print no other version. We already got the right one, right? They wasted all kind of, they wasted a lot of money, hadn't they? Printing all them other versions. We, they ain't even a version. This one ain't called it a version. Huh? They call it a perversion. Right. Amen? Amen? Amen. It's a perversion. That's what it is. Man, I tell you, I love the Word of God. And we got to remember the memorial because, because why? He wanted us to remember. He, he, wanted us to, he wanted the people to remember what went on here. And look here. Look what he says. And rehearse in the ears of Joshua. What's he going to rehearse it to him for? He's going to rehearse it to him because why? It's going to encourage him. Look at here. What, you, what we preach tonight and you tell it to somebody else. Or, or every time it gets preached, every time it gets rehearsed, it's doing what? It's helping somebody else. That's what the Bible does. The Bible is inexhaustive. It's an inexhaustive book. You can get you a Field and Stream magazine tomorrow. You can read the whole book and throw it in the trash can. You can read this one for an eternity and it still will stand. Amen. Mm. Amen. I'm telling y'all stuff you already know. That's why you're going to sleep. Remember the memorial. Those times when you held your pastor or you held your uh, husband's hands up and you saw God defeat the enemy. You saw God answer some prayers in your life. You saw God do some things there. Somebody you're praying for for salvation and man, and, and just all, they get saved, praise God. But it all comes at the helms of prayer and all comes at the helms of preaching the gospel. That's where it comes from. Okay, the gospel. If Aaron and Hur had not held up Moses' hands in battle, Amalek would have taken them, right? Okay? They would have. The enemy will win if we do not fight, if we do not stand, and we do not fight with the word of God. Men must keep Satan away from your family. You must keep him away from your family. Pastors must keep Satan out of their churches. Okay, to be able to discern who walks in, be able to discern the thing or know and be able to know what's what's what, you know, who's that who's that wolf in sheep clothing, who you fellowship with, who you listen to. OK, that's what you got to be careful about. We must. We must do that. But everybody must do their part in the body instead of grumbling and complaining all the time, which is what most Baptists default. Right. Uh, and that right, the Bible talks about that. It's right there. I started to preach that. You know, the first part where they murmur, always murmuring against Moses and, and all this, all that kind of stuff. We all want to grumble and complain, you know, but I'm telling you, they ain't got no time for that. But there's no time. Okay? We must pray and we must stand and we must know that Amalek is real. We must know that he's out there. But like Pastor Burson said last night, we got to be bold, we got to preach the gospel. We got to be bold. We got we to know what we're talking about. You come to church one weekend. I, you come to church one Sunday out of the week or hit and, hit and miss and don't, don't join in with the church. You always, always got something to do. I can't go soul winning. I can't do that. I, you're not do, doing one thing, but you're not doing one thing but hurting your own self. You're hurting your own self by not doing that because you're never going to be bold. You're never going to have, you're, ne you're always going to be that little sissy Christian. Huh? I'm not, I, yeah, sissy Christian, okay? Somebody that says, I, you know, I can't, okay? When the Bible says, I can, okay? Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you and we thank you again for another day you've given us. We thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much, Lord, for this church, for Pastor Burzens and Pastor Shelley over here, Father. I, I thank you for them, God. I thank you for their stand. And Father, I just thank you so much, God, for these uh, people, God, that uh, Pastor uh, Burzens has, has got in, in the fold there, Lord, that he pastored the flock there. And God, I thank you for them. I thank you for the smiles on their faces and the handshakes and, and the hugs that they give, God, and the compassion that they have for people. And thank you so much God for their hospitality. I pray God you bless them Lord in a great and mighty way. Bless their church for giving just giving to me this week. Just giving me a box of food and, and giving me some waters and some different things there and feeding me every night. Bless them just for that much Father. And Lord I know God it'll be an abundance of, of way yonder more than we could ever imagine. Now Father I pray you go with your people that need to leave tonight and Lord be with us for the rest of this week. I pray you anoint each pastor God. I pray God you uh, give them Lord what they need and give them, give them the word that they need to share with us, God, that we might go out, God, and, and, and become better believers for you. For it's in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank y'all. Oh.